Just to catch everyone up on, on what the heck is going on in this stream, we're doing the Big Data Bowl, which is a Kaggle competition. The rig is right there. We are training models on it as we speak. We're gonna, we're gonna be doing Z by HP stuff all night tonight. The object of the Big Data Bowl is to come up with a new metric for special teams. And so when I think of special teams, and I think of kick returns, can we predict the expected yards gained given where a player catches the ball? We've taken our data, we've made a ton of functions based around the data in Just. So all sorts of different things that allows us to clean the data. We wrote all of this in a few streams before this one, cleaned all of our data, generated some, some data frames for us to train in our models. We've taken all this data and we've turned it into what may be known to some as a feature store. But one thing that we realized in our modeling was uh, there was a little bias in terms of the different kick types. So whether it was a punt or a kickoff, you actually had different estimates of return, but our model didn't know the difference between a kickoff or a punt. It could only infer. We've retrained our models, one model being our tackle model and one model being our kick return model. And the way it works is we predict on a kickoff or on a punt return, who's the most likely tackler. And every single player who's on the, the kicking team gets a tackle probability. So the likelihood that they'll tackle the ball returner. And then we have the expected return model, where given the tackle probability of all the defenders and all these different aspects of special teams play, whether it's a punt or a kickoff, how far will the kick returner gain? How many yards will they gain? We've calculated all that stuff and we can actually see the old outputs in GIF form or GIF form. The first thing that's going on is, uh, well, you can see that this is a punt. Uh, the second thing is a few different lines. Uh, so this line here is the line of scrimmage. That's where the play starts. Uh, you can see that that's where everyone's sort of lined up. The second line you'll probably see is this moving line. Uh, this moving line that moves back and forth here, that's the expected return yards. So that's where at any given moment in, in our prediction, how far we think the, in this case, a punt returner is going to get to. So the saw line is where they actually end up going to at the end of the play. And then there's this blue line here that also gets placed down. A blue line is when the, the returner catches the ball at that particular moment, and we actually freeze on this moment. In this moment, all the information is given to the returner in terms of who's close, who might be the tackler, what direction you should run, or if you should run at all. Maybe you should fair catch it. And so given all that information, at the time a player catches the ball, we estimate this is how far this player should run given our model expectations. So all the players who have returned punts, this is where we think this player is going to run to. However, in this particular case, we see that this player handedly beats how many yards they are expected, and they actually gain more yards than expected. So we're going to run this on any random play, and we can see what ends up happening on any play. So we can run through this and let's see what this comes out with. Remember, this is all backed by ZYHP, helped us generate the models, generate the outputs we're using. As we speak, we actually just finished a model tune and train and prediction. We're gonna be starting the next model tune, train and prediction momentarily. All right, let's see what happens in this punt. Deep in their own, uh, are they gonna get anywhere? Okay, expected yards to gain is here and this player ends up just going uh, out of bounds. You can see who the likely tackler is by that really large blue dot nearest the kick return, the punt returner. The larger the dot, the more likely that player is to tackle the player. The The actual description of this play is B man punts 49 yards to the Miami 22. J Grant ran out of bounds at the Miami 29 for a seven yard gain. So this player ends up making seven yards, but is that good or bad? Like is seven yards a something good to expect or something bad to expect given where the expected line is and where he actually ends up gaining it seems to be an addition of like two or so yards so just based off the actual versus expected it seems like he gained more than expected and that's good you're doing better than what math thinks you'll do. This is a punt from our guy, Andy Lee. Andy Lee, here we go, Andy Lee. All right, Andy Lee kicks this. 
And where this is caught, the expected is here. But notice where this guy gets tackled? This is behind that expected line. So, so is this good even though it goes for four yards? So the, in, the, in that last punt, it went for seven yards. And that ended up being okay, even though the guy went out of bounds on mostly his own volition. This returner gains four yards, which is still positive, but is that good? In my model's estimation, it isn't good. This is similar to the one we just saw. But you can see, like, where this guy catches it and where it's estimated. Like, at this frame, this is several yards before that expected. But that defender that ends up getting him, he's totally free. Like, to this guy? Yeah. This guy's totally free. He beats two blockers. Uh, let me walk y'all through the model that we used to train at least half of this stuff. So here's the model we used. This is our tackle probability model. We had to actually, so something we did off stream, I ran into some bugs because we use Optuna, you know, hyperparameter tuning package. The version update right now kind of breaks our current modeling. So I froze the branch. That's really the biggest change here. Uh, so we take this tackle model data. This is why it's all commented out so we don't in have to run through this again. But uh, we take this tackle model data, which we created from this notebook. Then we use the features that we took from that specific munging of data. The second most important thing that we did in this code is include our special team's play type. So that's whether it was a kickoff or if it was a punt or some type of kick. So we take your special team's play code. That's the newest feature to add into this. And then uh, we trained our model. So this is our model here. We ran through this guy, tuned through all these different steps. Optuna did this for us. And then came out with this set of model parameters. We take those model parameters and we shove it through out of sample prediction. So this is a five-fold cross val. It trains on 80% of the data, 20% of the data is not in sample. We save that 20% prediction and we just fold over. We get predictions for every row and then we output it to this thing. Processed, tackle, pred, there you go. So when we load this data in, you can see that our aux score is actually not too different than what it was before. And also our, when we're looking at tackle specifically, we actually didn't change the model much at all. So even including that feature, our model was still doing pretty good without the knowledge of a kick or a punt. But now that it has it, it seems to not hurt the model, which I think is good. But yeah, this is a light GBM model through Optuna. Uh, the feature set's relatively small. We're just using uh, X, Y coordinates, speed, the direction they're running, and then, or the player, we're just using some really simple metrics like uh, how quick are they off the line in 300 milliseconds? How much movement is happening before a snap happens? Uh, a player's height and a player's weight. Uh, and then some simple Euclidean distance stuff. So this is just distance formula to the nearest defender, nearest tackler, nearest blocker. And we're training on whether or not a tackle happens. Specifically the player who is nearest the defender. Distance to likely tackler. So right now we're running off some of the older predictions we've made, but we're currently training a model with new predictions using our Z by HP workstation. It's hp.com slash data science. hp.com slash data science. I oh. personally bought every HP Z book Fury 17 on the market, thanks to Nick One's sponsored stream with Z by HP. Not only were we able to train two models that usually took me 14 hours, it's now taken me about an hour to train my models, but I'm actually through with all the cross-fold validation, all the, all the validation, all the statistical metrics that I need, all the out-of-sample predictions that I'm making and storing in our feature store. We're ready to actually import the new predictions because of my Z by HP workstation. So we take our model and we have our uh, estimated or our expected return yards. Over the course of the season, we could actually add all of the times you beat out the prediction, right? And that prediction is that blue line that gets plotted. For a given punt or kick, whenever the returner catches it, we draw this blue line, this expected line. And so from that point, do you lose or gain yards? Some returners gain way more yardage than expected. Like Andre Roberts in 2020, 
ended up gaining an extra 234 yards over expected. Jamal Agnew, 185 yards over expected. And this makes sense because look how many times they're returning punts and kicks. They are the primary kick and punt returners for their team. All the other players in the league, they're, you know, 20 to 30 kicks or punts. And, you know, Gunner here, he's like, he doesn't get as high frequency usage as these other two, but he still makes a ton of yardage over expected, even with limited amount of looks. Brandon Wilson might be the best out of all of them. Look how many yards he gains in nearly half the amount that Agnew gains. 60 yards less, but he does it in nearly 20 returns less. On the other side, like, you could see that these rates don't really change from the top or the bottom, and these players are losing yards versus their expected, right? Barrow Cooper lost 67 yards than expected, just makes poor decisions uh, returning the ball. Christian Kirk, great receiver, apparently not so great from special teams play. And we talked about Nicole Hardman, right? Uh, negative 56 yards return over expected, but we also have that mix, like we have that tackle probability uh, metric. And uh, that tackle probability metric, if we add up all the times you should have been tackled, but you weren't, we get about five tackles that were completely missed if you are Jamal Andrew or Andre Roberts. But look at Nicole Hardman here. He gets, uh, he's also in this top 10 with also nearly four missed tackles simply because of how he runs. It's not like you see something and like he creates a missed tackle or something. It's the probability, the probability of a missed tackle. I hope I packed enough G-rated stuff into this so you can figure out how we, how we're going to go through it. But the next three hours, Tony, I don't know. They might not be usable. Thank you for informing me of these fine HP products, Nick. I will now purchase them thanks to your stream. Thank you for informing me of these fine HP products, Nick. I will now purchase them thanks to your stream. Thank you for informing me of these fine HP products, Nick. I will now purchase them thanks to your stream. Thank you for informing me of these fine HP products, Nick. I will now purchase them thanks to your stream. Thank you for informing me of these fine HP products, Nick. I will now purchase them thanks to your stream. Thank you for informing me of these fine HP. I'm the greatest data science streamer of all time.